He's Sean Casey, former Major League Baseball All-Star, MLB Network analyst, three-time All-Star, wearing a Smedium here. He's a member of the Cincinnati Reds <laughs> Hall of Fame. What are you doing with the T-shirt there? Wait a minute. I'm just so jacked, Dan. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. It's an, it's an XL. What, does it look like a Smedium here? It does. <laughs> give, me, give me a double gun. Give me both you, both you barrels. Want a double gun? <laughs> both barrels. Double barrel, Whoa. baby. I gotta, get, Whoa. I gotta get these things licensed. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been tested uh, any lately, Sean? <laughs> well, you know what, Dan? I thought I'd get in shape after I was done. <laughs> <I thought that. laughs> you are still as slow as you were when you played, right? <laughs> I'm slower than I was and in better shape. It's, it's, it's just crazy. It's crazy. All right. Uh, help me understand Major League Baseball. It feels like anything that's said at the home office is leaked to the media here. There's no secrets here with Major League Baseball. So what, what do you think is the best case scenario here for Major League Baseball? Wow. This is, yeah, you're right. I don't think there are any secrets. seems like there's no secrets anymore in life. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh you know, I, I think the best case scenario is hopefully, uh, you know, baseball, you know, that, that they, they find a way to maybe get some games this year. I just I just feel like it would be great for everybody. But I do understand both sides, Dan, obviously coming from the player's point of view. But uh, I do know I do know Rob Manfred is is one of the smartest guys out there. Tony Bettini, who's right next to him. You know, those guys that are that are running baseball are, 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 are so smart. They'll, they'll leave no stone unturned. Tony Clark over there with the, with the lawyers that they have with the union, with the players, you know, trying to figure this out. I do know that, you know, they will, they will, they will try and come to a conclusion that's good for everybody. That's good for the fans of baseball. That's good for the players and the owners. And th we're just an uncharted territory. So some of the things that maybe, you know, flew in the past, maybe won't now. And it's just some of the, some of the things that, that the players have to do too, to be able to go and play. I think, they definitely need to be evaluated, but I think that, that that both sides will figure it out, hopefully. Would you play baseball if you were still on a roster? You're asking me personally? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I would. I'm just trying to understand, you know, the risk with this, obviously the rewards. And then you hear Blake Snell of uh, the Rays saying, "I it's not enough money for me to come back and play. Can you see the haves and the have-nots that – you know, are, are big, t big ticket item guys not going to come back or, you know, the guys who have less money and, and as much to you know, like the league minimum, like, yeah. Can you see where one or the other is going to say it's not worth me coming back? I can see, you know, both side, both point of points of view. There's, I, I think one thing with, you know, when you think about Mike Trout talking about, he's, he's about to have a kid and, and, you know, what if he's quarantined and, you know, those kind of things, th those are real things. I, you know, and, and obviously, you know, Dan, over the years with, with the money back and forth, I mean, obviously, you know, both sides are going to fight with they, with, for, for their rights, which is that's what it should be. And I think that's, that's fair. Um, but I do think, you know, player safety and, and stuff like that with families and all, all that, you know, definitely comes into account. Um, but I think the teams will get together and, and figure out, you know, what's best for the, what's best for each team. But I do understand the point of view of, uh, of guys that, uh, you know, safety for their families and stuff. Cause I, I, no one knows, just no one knows, but I do think what they say, there's going to be 10,000 tests a week and that, and that each, each, each player, you know, and if you do get it, you will be quarantined. And so I don't know, you know, I, I, they're trying to do the best they can with what they have. Yeah. But they're talking about, you're not allowed to spit. And what happens, <laughs> you're a first baseman. <laughs> Are you holding somebody on first base and then uh, you can't have social distancing at first base, John. Well, I, th that's crazy. I was just uh, talking to somebody this morning about that, and it reminded me of the story. I think I might have even told it on the, on your show at one point when, you know, social distancing. So what happens? Does the guy get his his fi his uh, four foot five foot lead off, and then are you allowed to pick over? And I I still remember. I remember I was social distancing with Henry Rodriguez my first year in the big leagues when you know back in the day when you know oh Henry when he would homer in Montreal, I'd throw those O. Henry bars in yeah. the field. And I remember him getting off first. And I was like my second week in the big leagues. I'm all excited. And we're social distancing. He's about six feet away. And I said to him, hey, Henry, I really love it when they throw those O. Henry bars onto the field. And he turned to me 
and said, hey, thanks a lot, man. And right when he turned, Ron Valone stepped over, poop, pick up, picked over. I, I caught it, and I said, oh, man, I'm my bad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea he was going to pick over. I thought we were just social. I thought we were just social distancing 22 years early. <laughs> I, 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 this it it just there's a lot of questions when they say you can't spit i i don't can guys do that i don't know have you ever been into a, into a big league dugout after the game when you yes. look down you look it looks like a murder scene you're like what happened here there's <laughs> there's dip spit there's sunflower seed spit there's freaking spit everywhere like you gotta be kidding me like we need day, dna tests to see what just happened here so i can't imagine big leaguers could go a whole game not spit Imagine when they say you can't adjust yourself either. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there's so much, there's so much to unpack here, but that's going to be a tough one. You adjust yourself twice already during this interview here. Exactly. I'm just my shirt. You got me. You're in my head about the Schmedium comment. I'm a, I'm an absolute mess right now. <laughs> uh, you got a picture behind you. Is that Doc Gooden and Strawberry? Oh, yeah. And is Mike Tyson? Oh yeah, Mike Tyson, Strawberry, and Gooden. How about that? And then I got Jim Leland and my son this year at the all at the uh, World Series. But that Tyson Gooden and Strawberry one—that's that's a classic. Wait, wait, how did you get that? I was at the Bat Awards um, uh, baseball assistant team in New York a couple years ago, and this is an unbelievable story, Dan. We we were, you know, I go to the Bat Awards. I was in town for the network, and it turns out there was like the snow. I can't remember what it was five six years ago. There was that humongous snowstorm that hit New York. Yep. And no one came. To, no one came to the bad awards, but me and like a couple other people. And they had all these unbelievable items, and I just start bidding on everything. And uh, that was, and that was one of them. And then the other one was this one. How about this one right here? Okay. This one right. This one right here is unbelievable. Right. Wait, can you see it? Joe DiMaggio and Marilyn Monroe. Can you guys see that? Yeah, yeah. Joe DiMaggio, and Marilyn Monroe, and two signed checks from them. And I got that. I got that there too. So. <laughs> I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for that bad event because I got some unbelievable items. But Joe, Joe DiMaggio and Marilyn Monroe signed checks are in my house, too. Is that the best memorabilia you have? I think that the Joe DiMaggio, Marilyn Monroe thing might be the best. And I remember there was three guys at the event and they were all hovered around bidding on it. And I was like, I'm getting this thing. I am getting this. I am getting Joe DiMaggio, Marilyn Monroe in my house. <laughs> it's great to talk to you. You must be driving the wife crazy. All your no. energy. So I'm going, I'm driving everybody crazy. I'm driving everybody crazy. My, my 14 year old daughter, I don't know if you have any, my, uh, my teenage daughter's like, all right, you're one of the most annoying human beings alive. Please stop talking to me. <laughs> I have three daughters and they're yeah. in their twenties. I've been yeah. there where you're the, you're the, you're the dumbest guy on the planet. I'm so dumb. It's unbelievable. I, I'll go and talk to her. She's like, Oh my gosh, you're so dumb. She plays guitar, Dan. <laughs> So I've, I've been having my guitar out, like, you know, just ripping a couple tunes. And I'm like, hey, let's play a little Every Rose Has Its Thorn and sing along. She's like, oh, you're such a loser. You're let me, let a me loser hear a little now. bit. Let me hear a little bit. Oh, you want to hear? All right. This is the only song uh, I really know. This is a Sean Casey, former baseball I've never played. I've never played nationally, but I'm terrible. Uh, MLB Network Analyst. Wait. Okay. See? Well, see. Here we go. Here you go, Dan. I changed the chord. Every rose has its thorn. I don't know. I, I do the best I can. I do the best I can, bro. It just, you know, that's why my that's why my daughter thinks I stink right there because that's all I got. All I got is that. Oh, it's great to talk to you. All right. Uh, we'll get some baseball here one of these days. Thank you, Sean. Great to check in with you. All right, Dan. Great talking to you, bro. See you guys soon. Tell your, tell your, tell your boys hi, too. All right. Sean Casey. He's uh, in the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame.